I told you guys I was going to be live one more time this morning before I got up out of here, man. But um, I got some things I got to go take care of real quick. But so but we are live in the building, man. I got my boy. I got my cousin HTM from um, HTM Sports up in here, man. I also I, oh, I was about to stop out here, landlord, but he's not here today. Uh, but I got my I got my cousin HTM from HTM Sports up in here, man. And we about to get this thing popping. So what's up with you, my boy? Man, living righteous, man. You know, we came over here to talk numbers, talk about these damn crazy ass cowboys, and you know, we're just gonna get into it, brother. I heard that. Well, you guys already know whenever West Coast goes live, there's two things you guys must do. Uh, first thing you must do is you must hit that share button. So I need everybody right now to hit that share button. No matter where, where you're watching at, no matter what platform you're watching on, I need you guys to hit that share button right now for the boy, man. Share the content. If you're watching on YouTube, you can you can share the content. You just go to the bottom right there and you hit that share button and it's going to allow you to share the content so it can stimulate the world. The stimulation. Yeah, I mean. So hit that hit that word so we can stimulate. Next thing I need you guys to do is there's these thing called stars. What are stars? Stars are a monetary way for you, the content creator. I mean, the content watcher to support the content creator. Who's the content creator? It's your boy West Coast, man. So I need all everybody right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say your name. As I say your name, I need you guys to go on there and hit that share button and then hit, hit that star button. If you don't mind, please hit that share button, hit that star button. Also, don't forget. I still am giving away the Trevon Diggs jersey. Top star giver today will be going home with a, with a Trevon Diggs jersey. So make sure if you have not already, make sure you guys hit that star button, star button to get entered, man. Just got to remember, top star giver today will be going home with a, with a Trevon Diggs jersey. So make sure you guys hit that star button, man. Yeah, feed me. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm updating all the um, thumbnails right now. HTM, you should have got the thumbnail well as yourself. I received it. It's received and it's going to be uploaded. All right. So go ahead and show some love to some folks that's showing some love to you, helping you keep them bills on over there, sir. Oh, no doubt, man. Hey, Tommy Montoya, I see you, Porter the Wrench Gang, tapping in. He says, What up to both of us, man? Yeah, yeah. Nelly Rogers over here showing love. Uh, Double R, part of the Wrench Gang, tapping in. Michael Lockhart, tapping in. Daisy Clark. Uh, I say, My boy Brian Kite, what's up with you, man? I see you in there. How you living? So yeah, there's a bunch of folks over here showing love. I see my I see my admins in here showing love with me. So we ready to go, man. I heard that, man. All right, Bill. I see you, brother. What's up, Witch? I see. Okay, let me say some what's up to some, some shout outs too. Hey Ed, what up, Ed? What up, Nelly Rogers? What's up, Emmanuel Thomas? What's up, Miss Cortez? What's up with you? Uh Mark Home um Hughes. Sorry about that. Um, uh, Mark Hughes, what's up with you? Nelly Rogers, what's up with you? Appreciate you. Um, Mark from Canada, what's up, sir? Um, who else we got up here? Emmanuel. We also got some very important people on YouTube that's keeping these lights on too. And hey, man, you guys were just watching on YouTube. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Hey, um, hey, you got to update your thumbnail, my boy. I got you. I got you. You know, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to get my stuff shared on all these different platforms, Kim. Folks, give me one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so what's up, DP Johnson? What's up with you, J um, Jameson Taylor? Appreciate you guys. Let me put the cash app up there. Listen to me. I got my ticket today. I mean, actually, I got my ticket this weekend. I got my ticket. My airplane ticket to the draft. I got my airplane ticket to the draft this weekend, and I bought that ticket with the cash apps that you guys sent me. Thank you. Let me stop right now. Tell y'all this right now. I appreciate you. You feel me? So listen, I bought my draft ticket this, this past weekend with the cash apps that you guys sent. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. You feel me? I appreciate you. All right, so let's go through this real quick. Dan Trantrina, appreciate you. Uh, HTM, I see you in the building. Uh, Donald, uh, Double R, I see you. Jameson Taylor, I see you. Appreciate you, sir. Um, uh, Tony, Mon Joe Monte, I see you. Brandon, what's up, boy? DP, Jameson Taylor, DP Johnson. Wrench Gang, appreciate you, my boy. Uh, Christmas Baby, what's up with you, my boy? Um, like that name, that's different. Christmas one of my is my favorite time of the year, so you know I like that. That's different. Um, who else we got over here? Ch hey, Charlie, what's up, Joe? What's up, sir? Emmanuel. Hey, also, I'm going to tell you all this real quick. We about to start the show, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Have you ever wanted to talk? Jameson said, I just subbed to your channel yesterday, uh, HTM. I oh, appreciate you, Jameson. I appreciate the love and support for that. Appreciate you. Hey, also, we HTM needs 400 people to go to HTM Sport and hit that subscribe button so he can get monetized. He's, elite, he's exactly... 400 away he's exactly 400 away i need you right now if you have not subscribed to hcm sport to go over there i'm gonna post it on my page too so we can help him out a little bit to get him to the top to the thousand so we can get him up there 
He says, West Coast, you spend too much time telling people to share stars and stuff. No need. We want to hear show. Absolutely, Bill. I don't spend enough time because none of this stuff is free. Hell you mean, Bill. If I don't if listen to me, if they don't share and send stars, there won't be a West Coast. Because I'm not paying for this stuff by myself, bro. This, I, I paid for this since 2014. This stuff is expensive, bro. It costs $342 just to have a certain internet so I can go live and not bleep out. Nah, bro. You got to support this. Jerry Jones ain't letting you watch them Cowboys for free. See, <laughs> Burlington, I see you, man. What's up? But I, but I appreciate you, but nah, Bill Beast, Breeze, nah, man. Until they change the word the monetary system works, we're going to have to share and we're going to have to support. You know what I'm saying? All right, John Rod, appreciate you, my boy. C. Burleson, what's up with you? 80 on it, 80 on it, but I appreciate you, your feedback, Bill. But we're going we gonna to talk that money over here, same way Jerry do, because it costs to pay the boss. You know what I'm saying? It costs to be on every morning. What's up, Edie? Be on it. Hey, Joshua, what's up, which man? I appreciate you for going over there and uh, hitting the subscribe button, brother. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hey, if you just subscribed, Jameson Taylor's on his way to dial a dialysis real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, you touch my brother that's out there that's going to dialysis. And I also ask you, Lord, you touch anybody that's under the sound of my voice that is going through anything this morning, Lord. I ask you, Lord, you touch them and heal them and let them have a great day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You feel me? I, I, man, dialysis, I know what it is, man. I used to own a business that owned, that cleaned uh, dialysis, uh, you know, um, the locations, man. And, man, just seeing people sitting there all day, bro, like all day. You are literally there all day, man. Salute to you, my boy. Hey, listen to me. I make content for the Dallas Cowboys fans that's sitting in dialysis rooms all day. They can't go nowhere. You feel me? I bang for you. You feel me? Let's go, man. That made that motivated me this morning. God dang it. On oh, my mama, we got to go harder. You feel me? Like, for real, bro. That's folks that's literally, bro, sitting up in dialysis clinics all day, bro. All day. You feel me? Watching them boring-ass movies they put on. You feel me? No. West Coast and HTM, we got you, bro. We got you. For at least the next 40 minutes, we got you. You feel me? All right, let's go. Also, I'm going to tell you all this real quick. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever wanted to, have you ever wanted to have a conversation with a two-time Super Bowl champion? If you've ever wanted to have a conversation with a two-time Super Bowl champion, here's your, here's your opportunity. Why? Because tomorrow, West Coast and HTM, we will be interviewing um, two-time Super Bowl champion. I don't know why it's not letting me show it right here. Um, two-time Super Bowl champion, Tony Casillas. Let's see if it'll let me do it now. Now, he will be in the building tomorrow. Oh, there it go. There it go. It has to be an overlay. That's why. Okay, that's why I was messing up. Okay. All right. So, yo, two-time Super Bowl champion, Tony Casillas, will be in the building tomorrow. 10 a.m. Cali time, 12 p.m. non-Cali time. That means if you're in somewhere in Texas or anything else, you're going to tune in at 12. HTM Sports, West Coast Cowboy, and Landlord will be interviewing two-time Super Bowl cha champion Tony Casillas. It's going to be a great conversation. I'm going to tell you this right now. Tony is a guy who, who, who prides himself on being up-to-date on all things Cowboy. He has a very high opinion of the Cowboys and his former team. And I'm going to tell you this right now. It's going to be a great conversation. You know what I'm saying? Right. And let's not sell him short. He also was a national championship champion. He won a national championship with uh, Oklahoma as well. Back when the Sooners were handling business. He is a defensive tackle, so he is a very defensive-minded guy. You know, he, he held down the middle of that of that defense in our first two Super Bowls. So, you know, like, he's he's a guy that you got to have a lot of respect and love for. You know, it's, it's a pleasure that he want to come over here and talk to us. So, man, when he come on here, please come over and support. And, you know, we're going to ask him all the real tough questions. Facts. 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 You know what I'm saying? So, yo, we're going to be talking, man. Listen to me. I'm I'm a, I'm going to be – I listen to because the only people that I know that know how to talk that, that defense better than me or oh, that defense better than HTM is a dude that actually played for these Cowboys. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I also want to know how the hell it was like dealing with Jerry Jones and this old crooked ass. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to remember, Tony did a couple contracts with Jerry. You know what I'm saying? He did at least one contract, and that was to bring him to Dallas. So I'm very interested to know how is it really doing – how is it being coached by Jimmy Johnson? And then I also want to know how was it actually working for Jerry Jones? Like, I want to know. So – Man, and I'm going I'm to I'm straight up ask Tony, like, listen, Tony, you think you got, like, 12 snaps in you? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like, uh, at some point in the conversation, listen to me. Yesterday, I was at, I was in Vegas two days ago, and I saw this big old burly-looking white dude. He was big in the mud. He probably, like, 22 years old. Big old dude. 
big old broad shoulders. Looked like his suit was just way too small. And I looked at him and I said, bro, he said, what? How can I help you, sir? I said, bro, you play guard? He said, well, actually, I did. I, I, how did you know that? I said, how old is you? He said, I'm 23. I said, when was the last time you played football? He said, uh, about, about, about seven months ago, and I, I tried a, a little pro day camp here at UNLV. I said, okay, well, uh, I want you to take my number down because I got a people in Dallas that might hit you up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a damn, bro. I don't care, bro. I'm on my job. If Micah Parsons is out here recruiting, you is not going to out-recruit me. You feel me? If Tony can see has got a couple snaps in him, I'm trying to see what's up with it. Oh, my mama. And, oh, hey, my real quick, shout-out to Sharon Bill for the $10 donation. I appreciate the love and support, Mel. Thank you. Hey, hey remember, that's not a donation. That's a send, That's that's a $10 send Hand it to the draft fund. Appreciate you. If you indeed, have. indeed, indeed. Because, hey, everything in between now and April is going to the draft. Because, you know, we're going to be we're gonna be flying. Well, they're going to be flying out. I'm actually going to end up driving up. We got to pay for a hotel. Got to pay for, uh, for rent a car because I'm getting my ass dropped off. <laughs> so I appreciate y'all for everything. Yes, sir. So, yo, we appreciate y'all for sending cash to the Henny Go to the Draft Fund. It's yeah, going to be listen. Hey, you, 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 uh, dragging me up there, kicking and screaming, cause you know. So, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it for the team. But hey, I want to give a shout, uh, special shout out to West Coast man for, uh, for making this happen, man. Cause I listen, I was not initially gonna go. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. But you know, he as my, as my big cousin, he sort of guilted me into it, right? He, you know, he guilted me into it. Like, what, what? You know the people love you. They want you to go. They need you to go. So I'm going. Facts. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you this right now. Listen to me. I'm the type of person when Henny don't even know and what HTM Sports don't even know is like, it, like as soon as this is over, then that's what I'm going to do. As soon as we leave the draft, I'm going to shake his hand. All right, cuz, I love you, man. I see you. And we're like, all right, cuz, as soon as we get out, I was like, hey, man, so uh, you going to train the camp? Or? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're just going to change to a whole nother subject. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't don't think don't think. Okay, I'm gonna go to the draft. Then if I go to the draft, West Coast ain't gonna say nothing about you. Hell no, nah, I'm gonna say something. <laughs> and think about this. I, at least I'm the type of family member that invites you somewhere with a plan on how to get there. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I said, he said, how are we gonna get there, cuz? I said, shoot, we about to do some content. Hell, you mean we about to go live? <laughs> you feel me? So let's go ahead and let's hey, let's get to this content and let's get y'all what y'all paying, what y'all, what you guys are paying. for the folks who supporting this content. Let's get these folks what they paid for. You feel me? And that's some straight funk. Let's get right to it. You feel me? So unless you were up under a tree, you already know the Cowboys traded for Brandon Cooks. But guess what? This morning. The Dallas Cowboys also put some information out there that they're possibly thinking about bringing in a guy named Rondell Jones. Now, I know him because I'm a USC guy, but if you don't know him, it's all good. It's all good. You ain't supposed to know him. Yeah, I mean, I, listen to me. I'm not hating on nobody, but I will say this. This is not a guy whose name should be mentioned in the same season, season as the same sentence as Ezekiel Elliott. Not even. Mm -mm. And I'm going to tell you this right now. This is not a – this he is if, – if the Cow – and I'm going to make a video on the Cowboys bringing him in for a, a walkthrough. But I'm going to tell you this. The Cowboys signed this guy. This is a Tony – this is not a Tony Potter. This is a Malik Davis type dude. This is a third string running back. I'm going to tell you this right now. I know he's from Texas. But this is a – this is a – this is a – this is a – this is a backup running back type of guy, guy. Yeah. What are your thoughts, man? Well, listen, I'll peep this. I don't know – no, he he went to Kansas City last year. He only got 17 carries. He only had 70 yards. He had one single little touchdown. Now you look at overall grades. You know he graded out of 69.8, but he only got what 2.18 yards per attempt last year. So you know that was not very good. The most he, most yards he ever had in a season was 900 and what 78 back in 2020. You know, he shared carries with Leonard Fournette. So like, what y'all probably remember him from is playing with Tom Brady. Like, he was a rotational running back. In college. I remember him in college. <laughs> I'm, yeah, a US, I'm a USC guy, so that's yeah. why I, I remember. I, Un I, understandable. I, understandable. For everybody else who, who, who may not have watched USC football, like, his claim to fame was he was on the, on the championship team for the Buccaneers. He was a rotational back. He relieved, um, you know, Leonard Fournette at, at different times. He was decent at, at different spots, but he is not a guy that you can hitch your wagon to 
like he he probably be fighting for the number two spot if he does get signed. But you know he's he's not a he's not a game changing running back at all. No no offense to him, but you know I'm just looking at how he graded out overall. Uh, last year he graded out as a 70. The year before 62. His best season he graded out as a 73. He graded out as a 67. The year before that a 48. His rookie year so very average production. You know from the running back position, not a lot of yards uh, per attempt. When you when you're looking looking here. Like four point one, it's not not great production, but you know it is what it is. Like he's a body, he probably won't even make the team if you, if you sign him right now. I mean, this is my thing. If you have a if if you the, the only way Ronald Jones makes this team if you bring him in is if you don't draft somebody. I think you bring in Ronald Jones so that you don't have to draft somebody. And listen, like and, I'm, you know, and I because I think any draft pick that you draft will probably give you more production in him. And I'm gonna keep it real. If I, I think Malik Davis will beat him out, I feel like Malik Davis will beat him out. Like I, I, I don't believe. I like I don't. I think Ronald Jones is a is a is a James Washington. Ronald Jones is a guy that they're looking at because they know they don't have a second running back. And to be honest with you, like this is my thing too. Considering that you're starting running back until he is 100 healthy, you got to look at any running back that comes in right now as a potential one bay running back. Until you know when Tony Pollard's going to come back. You cannot just assume that Tony Pollard's going to come back healthy. Now, I know Cowboy Nation is going to do that anyway, but I will be here, the guy reminding you guys of Michael Gallup. I will be here. I will never let you guys forget that, and you can get mad at me if you want to. Mm -hmm. But we should have learned our lesson. So any running back that we bring in right now has to be has to actually have number one running back almost characteristics because there's a high chance that you will be a number one running back. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. But this is the thing, like, because, listen, the way that the NFL is, is undervaluing the running back position anyway, it doesn't even make sense to sign another running back. You're technically, you're already overpaying Tony Pollard just based on giving him the franchise tag and not a long-term deal, you know, just based on, you know, Josh Jacobs, who led the league in rushing, making the same amount of money as Tony, and Miles Sanders only making about $6.something million a year. So you're already overpaying on Miles Sanders, you just cut Ezekiel because you did not want to overpay the running back position allegedly. So I would even sign a veteran running back. You already have Tony Pollard, who when healthy uh, was a he made a Pro Bowl last year, right? So he was a thousand yard rusher. So you have the guy that you think is going is your future running back, even though you have not enumerated him like so. Well, so year. you have, yeah, for at least this year, you know he should he should at least be your your number one. So you have to, you have Tony Pollard. You drafted Malik Davis. You had had him in the program longer than than oh uh, than this other guy. So you know him. You know his production. You know his work ethic. And then you look at the running back draft. I know everybody has felt has fallen in love with Bijan Robinson, but I'm just gonna go through the names of all these other running backs that are out there, man. Jameer Gibbs. Hey, right? real quick, before you before you say it, I I even have a list of the Cowboys, the running backs that the Cowboys have spoken to. Oh, well, go ahead. Uh, read that list. Read that list, and I'll give you some other quotes. I'll tell you right now, matter of fact. These are the list. These are the five running backs. Um, Cowboys met with speedy running back Devon um, Arney. That was put out on March 5th by way of A to Z Sports. Cowboys also met with running back Jamar Gibbs. That was put out by on March 6th by way of Sports Illustrated. Cowboys met with B. John Robinson. That was put out February 21st by way of Sports Dallas Fort Worth. And then um, Cowboys meet with Deuce Vaughn. Uh, on March 5th, that was put out by 13.com. And then Cowboys met with Georgia running back Kenny McIntosh um, at the Senior Bowl. That was put out February 1st. Those are the three, those are the four running backs. I was going to send this to you too, Cuzzo, but I was got stingy and I was like, I'm going to make a video on it. Lord forgive me. You yeah, should. Hey, listen. I don't know. I apologize. I was holding conversation. I was holding. Nah, don't, don't you worry about that, man. Because listen, even and those are just the guys that they actually talk to, right? Because, you know, some of those guys won't be there. Look at, look at somebody like Eric Gray from Oklahoma. You know, 1,366 yards, 6.4 yards a carry, 11 rushing touchdowns, ran a 4-4 at the, at the combine. And he's not even projected to be a, a first round or second round pick. Like, he, they got him going late second round, third round. Like, there's plenty of guys that have been productive in the national football, you know, in, in, in the NCAA that you can get for cheap, right? We, we didn't even bring up the uh, the Spears boy from Tulane who, who reminds us of Tony Pollard with, with his explosive ability. So, like, there's a bunch of running backs in the draft that you could pay next to nothing. Bring them in, and they will probably be better day one than this guy. 
So no, no offense to Ronald Jones, right? No offense to him. I'm, I don't know him personally, you know, but just from, you know, a standpoint of money, standpoint of production from the running back position, like there are guys you can get for minimum wage, basically, that can do what he does. Just be honest about it. And like we said, we we don't even think that he's better than Malik Davis right now. So you know that 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 should say enough. So like yeah, they they brought him in, and even I was and even I was saying that I would prefer bringing in a veteran running back, but just not him, just not him. <laughs> hey, I'm fixing my microphone. The, the, the no, no, go ahead, bro. I got you. There, listen. Would y'all rather have Ronald Jones? Would y'all rather have Kareem Hunt? And I know Kareem Hunt, you know, has not had the production that he did to start his career. But at least you know that he was a former Pro Bowler. He was a thousand yard rusher. Even when he was splitting carries with uh with Chubb, he was still a productive runner. Still adds layer of explosiveness, layer of, of pass catching out, out of the backfield. So like when you look at the at the other available options, like somebody like Kareem Hunt, I would have called in Kareem Hunt and gave him a deal before I even thought about bringing in Ronald Jones, who was who has been a career backup running back. Then you know we already mentioned the, the draft picks or the other guys being being better. Like you got multiple guys in the draft that run four threes, right? Eric Gray was a four four guy, but you know then you have Arcane who was a four three guy. You got Deuce Vaughn who daddy, his daddy is already on the team as a scout. You wouldn't think they want to they would they would like to sign Deuce Vaughn, one of the other speedy wide receivers like I mean running back like Jameer Gills who was a four three guy who could play in the hey listen. And we, when we're talking about scheme fit, like some of the other guys out there fit the scheme better because in a West Coast offense, like, yeah, like being able to pass pass block a running back is cool, but because it's called a long handoff for a reason, like you need to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield, run routes and, and things like along in that nature. So, you know, like there are other guys that are already tailor-made for what we want to do coming out of the draft as opposed to drafting Ronald, Ronald Jones, so. I said his name right, Ronald Jones. Yeah, he's not even on my yeah. radar. I didn't know his. I didn't even get, get his name right. But point being, like, yeah, this is no for me. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you this right here, like, you know, in my opinion, the Ronald Jones, Ronald Jones being the first Cowboy running back that I mean, the cow, the first running back the Cowboys are connected to. I think it just only solidifies the point that the Dallas Cowboys did, had Ezekiel Elliott did not get released because of anything um, has to do with his production. He got released because of finances. And I'm gonna tell you this right here. The the uh, Ronald Jones is probably gonna cost you like a vet minimum, bro. He's not getting no freaking like how much did he make last year? Like Ronald Jones is gonna show you guys how much the Cowboys are actually willing to spend on a running back. Tell me how much he made last year. Oh, Ronald Jones, man, let me take a look, man. How much this boy that made? Like how much? Tell me how much money he made last year, because that's gonna tell y'all right now how much money the Cowboys are actually willing to spend on a running back. I do probably made like not even I don't even think he made a million dollars. He probably made like two million dollars. He, he made one point five million dollars last year on a one year deal with the Kansas City Chiefs. So guess what? And he only got 17 carries, bro. So that lets you know right there. The Dallas Cowboys are trying to pay a million dollars for a running back. So I'm going to tell you, Leonard Fournette is out. Uh, Kareem Hunt. There's a re there goes the reason why Kareem Hunt's not coming. He's out, bro. They're not trying to they're not trying to spend that money on them. And to be honest with you, this also makes me feel like Tony Pollard is not going to play on that tag, bro. I'm going to tell you this right now. If, you, if you're the Cowboys, what you're trying to do right now, if you're going to be this cheap, if you're really going to be this cheap, you know what it makes sense for the Cowboys to do? To go all in in the draft, get a kid like B. John Robinson and walk away from Tony Pollard too. Hmm. At that point, you know, if, listen, if you, if you care that much about not paying a running back, the smartest thing to do, and I, I don't, you know, actually propose doing this for my personal life. I wouldn't do people like this, but you know, it actually sucks to be a first round running, uh, round pick running back because peep this: you get drafted, you play on a rookie deal for four years, right? Then you have a fifth year option as a running back because of your position. The franchise tag on you will not be worth a quarter. They could do it like they did Tony Pollard. And because the market on running backs is going down, it will probably still about be about ten million dollars or so. Hold on. Hello. Yeah, my power just lit. my whole half my power just went off. Oh damn! All right, I think I'm still on though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep rocking till you get back on. All right. Bit. So West Coast is having technical difficulties right now. Can y'all hear me? 
and they put in the chat, but y'all can still hear me. He just called, said they had a, a small power outage. If you can still hear Henny the Moore, just say A, hey, and you know, we're gonna keep rocking. Yeah, it's not Tony's fault that he gets the 10 million, but I'm just saying it like this. Like uh as a it's a it's horrible, you know, to be a to be a first round pick uh, running back because they can control your contract for seven years, basically. Because you have the four uh, the four years on the initial rookie deal, he make he'll make next to nothing as a, as a rookie. Even as a, even as a first round running back, he'll make next next to nothing on the money wise. Then you can franchise. Then you have the fifth year option, right? Still won't be that much money. Then you can franchise tag the board two times, right? As a running back, because they're already devaluing the position, the uh, the franchise tag might be under the, the current ten million dollars it is right now. So you could franchise tag him back to back. You look up, you control this man contract for seven for seven seasons, and you have spent under market value as a whole for keeping the player. And look, Ezekiel Elliott only had a seven year career with the Dallas Cowboys, right? He only had a seven year career with the Dallas Cowboys. After seven years, you know, a lot of y'all were talking about him not having the same burst, you know, not ha- not being as explosive as he once was. So you know, after seven years of having a player, his career is pretty much over. So you know. Ezekiel Elliott did the right thing in holding out and getting the money when he did. He would never have gotten paid because, you know, that's why, you know, the Dallas Cowboys can be real shysty going forward with trying to get a running back to replace and not and not pay him. First round pick, get Bajon Robinson, you know, run him into the ground like you pretty much did Ezekiel Elliott. But this time, right, you just don't pay him. You just don't fold. You hold to your you hold to your guns. And you will. Uh, you make a play out the contract. You pick up the fifth year option. You put the two franchise tags on him, and shoot, you let him walk after that. You control this contract for seven years. He pay he played for under the market value, and listen, he, with all the carries and touches you be done put on that man, like his career would probably be done at that point. So hey, so like if, the, if they wanted to be real nefarious, real underhanded, real shysty, like and not pay a guy and just work the hell out of him. Go get your running back in the first round, and just not pay him like you did Ezekiel Elliott. Now, I I got a heart. I wouldn't do nobody like that. But you know, mathematically, like that's what most teams try to do. They do not want to pay the running back position, and they know that the shelf life on a running back is not that long anyway. Like you look at somebody like uh, Terrell Davis. He only he only had a seven year career. He really only had a four year deal. Say so how would how how much was Zeke's original contract? Let me show you. Cause like I, I think his original contract was only like twenty million dollars, fifteen million dollars. Let me take a look. Twenty four million dollars. Uh, mm-hmm. I still hear you. Mm hmm. So let's take a look. Boom. So let's see. Is he Elliot career earnings? There you go. So two thousand sixteen. Yeah, yeah. West Coast is right. It's, it was like a twenty-four million dollar contract. Twenty-four million dollar contract because he got he got sixteen million dollars up front. He had a base salary of four hundred fifty uh, grand. Then he had sixteen point three million. They gave him a signing bonus. He only played for a million dollars against the cap in two thousand seventeen. Two point <laughs> seven million dollars against the cap in two thousand eighteen, and only seven point. And only seven and only seven hundred and fifty two grand against the cap in 2019. Right. So he did not earn like a, a buku amount of money his first couple of years. So you, you know, it, 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 yeah, I can hear you loud and clear now. I think you're back, brother. Hey man, you can't hold a good cowboy down, man. You feel me? You cannot hold a good cowboy down. You feel me? We always gonna pop up. What up, man? I'm back. Hell you mean. My bad, y'all know how I be. No, you good, man. You back, you back in, in the full effect, man. Thank God. All right, so yo, what was we, t- we, what was we talking about? Uh, we, we was talking about Randall Jones. We, yeah, we talk, we were talking about running backs in general at, at this point. You know, we we said that the Dallas Cowboys are are not finna probably recoup Tony Pollard. Then you know, you talk about they should just move on and get Bajon Robinson or one of these other guys in the first. And then while you were gone, I broke down how mathematically they could really finesse the, finesse the first round running back. If they just don't pay them, make them play out their contract, pick up the fifth year option, and slap some tags on them. You theoretically can control their entire career without paying the market value. Facts. That's a good point. I mean, listen to me. The only way you would, I mean, 
if you draft Bijan Robinson in the first round, then the first thing you got to do is take the you have to take the the franchise tag back from Franklin Pollard, because now you're you're if you don't you're you're back to spending the same amount of money that you're going to spend. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I actually believe that um that they are going to rescind the tag on Tony Pollard. I think they're going to rescind it. You know what I'm saying? Because right now it doesn't make sense. Like you can actually get you should be able to get him on something cheaper. But the thing about it is. Since you've given him the franchise tag, who's to say that Tony? I mean, if I'm Tony Pollard, I want the ten million dollars now. You know what I'm saying? Because the chances of you getting a deal better than that are very, very slim. Because keep, running backs aren't getting that. Say, Con Barkley wanted twelve, and they gave him the tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, think, and think about this: because he was listen, his rookie deal was twenty four point nine million dollars, but that was for four years. That's basically six million dollars a year. So you know, like that's not no real money. There were multiple years where, where Zeke only cost you like under uh, cost you a hundred under under a million dollars a year. The one year that his cap hit was like seven hundred fifty grand. Yeah. So think and then think and then also this Henny. What what did the twenty the the six the twenty sixth overall pick make last year? What was the contract they got last year? The contract that Zeke got last year. No, the twenty sixth pick because you guys you guys remember in the draft they don't actually get paid by their their position they get paid by where you actually get drafted at so in the draft it's a little bit different you know what i'm saying when you're in free agency you get trapped you get paid by your by your actual position you know what i'm saying wide receiver running back da, 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 da. but in the nfl draft you're going to get paid based on where you're actually physically taken at so that's that's the real question too is how much money the, the dallas cowboys are going to have in that running back room because i mean if you um if you draft a running back you're going to pay him what you would pay the 26th overall pick you know what i'm saying so that's that's another thing. It's like, where is the Cowboys going to put that money? I think right now it's easier to put it on the offensive line because you're not really paying for guys on the offensive line. He got paid up front. Zeke, no, he didn't. Zeke was on a contract. What are you talking about? He got sixteen million dollars up front when he at the time of signing as a signing bonus. Yeah, because it was a contract. Yeah, but yeah, it's a contract still. Yeah, that don't that doesn't count against the cap. So, Hold and think on. about this: your twenty six pick is going to get some money up front too. Listen to me: money up front is good. Money up front is good. You so want Jermaine Johnson got picked number twenty six overall last year. And what was his contract? Let's take a look. Four years, thirteen million. How much did he get? How much did he count? How much was he for the first year? Let's take a look. What's up, JC Cowboy fan? Appreciate you, my boy. Hey, we got to get a show going, my boy. Cap Jeez. hit. Cap hit was two point three million. He had a base salary of seven hundred five grand. He had a signing prorated signing bonus of one point six million. So, so the team totally paid three million dollars, about four million dollars for their twenty six pick for the first year. Well, the, the the entire the entirety of the cap hit was two point three. So, 3. yeah. So the, the actual base salary was seven hundred grand. The cap hit, uh, the signing bon- prorated signing bonus was one point six. So that's how they got up to two point three million. Hmm. I mean, this is the thing. If you draft, say you draft a running back in the first round, you do actually draft a running back in the first round. He's cheaper than Tony Pollard. Yeah, you keep paying Tony Pollard ten million. There's not a single person whose cap hit coming out of the draft is going to be ten million dollars unless they're like the first overall pick. So it's like it's it's crazy because the Cowboys are literally doing moves that contradict each other. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're gonna, if you want to get rid of Zeke, why do you give a franchise tag to Tony Pollard? That puts you in the same situation, just a different name. Could have just signed into a long term deal, right? Because Miles Sanders only making six points, whatever million dollars a year. Aaron Jones had to restructure. There, you know, there's a bunch of guys or who 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 livelihoods are at stake. Josh Josh Jacobs got franchise tag. Derrick Henry's on the trading block. Like they're like they're actively devaluing devaluing the running back position. So as a whole, as a whole. So with Tony Pollard, you know, having only one good season of production, he has one thousand yard season. He has an injury currently, and while he is expected to make a full recovery at this point in time, he's still injured. So you know, like I think they, they, they I think they totally overestimated what the actual market for running backs would be this year. I, I think that they did. Otherwise, there's no way in hell they would have gave him a franchise tag. Yes, and you got to think like this. You know, as of right now. 
all the money, like, because Cowboy fans have literally became capologists because of all this, right? And think about <laughs> this. There, there's literally, there is, like, man, a Cowboy, I ain't never seen need so many Cowboy fans that got A's on their they math test. Like, come on now. You would think every Cowboy fan was an A student, bro, as much as, as good as we are on the cap now. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, as I look at these caps, man, I'm thinking, like, bro, there's $10 million that we're not even, we're not even, thinking about that we could literally free up $10 million. And how could you easily do that by doing what? I freaking rescinding the tag, take the franchise tag back. And then my question is this, if you took the franchise tag back right now, every running back is basically signed. So it's like, if you, and I'm going to tell you part of the reason, listen, if you rescind the franchise tag now, you might actually lose Tony Pollard. You want to know why? Because now he is the probably the best running back because the running back class is bad. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if you're a team that's interested in a running back that's not named the Dallas Cowboys, you should just go sign him, Ezekiel Elliott. Like, you should just go sign him. Like, that should be your thought. Ezekiel Elliott is the best available running back right now, and you can't even sign him. Why? Because he's all coming off your team. Um, TP's ligament damage is under-discussed. You know, man, now we in a position where we um, it's, we don't even need to discuss it. We just need to pray that it gets that is better. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to tell you all this right now. This season is going to spiral fast if Tony Pollard isn't able to play a, a large minute or if he's just not Tony Pollard. I'm just being real. If he's not Tony Pollard, then guess what? We're going to we're you're going to this season this season's going to spiral. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The Cowboys have already shown you that what they're willing to pay for a backup running back. Like I see why they didn't offer Zeke a a a, 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 a restructure or a damn um a goddamn um um pay a pay cut because there's no way Zeke was gonna come down to no million dollars, bro. And that's what they want to pay. They want to play vet min minimum. I agree. Because listen, there was a there was a real possibility of retaining Ezekiel Elliott because a restructure on Ezekiel Elliott's contract, if I'm not mistaken, would have saved you over six million dollars. So you know you could have kept Zeke's uh, Zeke's production, got the pay cut. Right, and you know you could have still went shopping, right? And you would have had the money up front. The ten million dollars you saved by cutting Zeke, you can't even touch till after the uh, the league year starts. So after June first, you get that extra ten million dollars on the cap. But you know, right now, like that's, that money is sitting in limbo. So yeah, like oh, they got to actively be trying to to press it. Also, OTD Pot had a very good um point. Like, what if they did offer Tony Pollard a contract and he misjudged his market value? Um, there's no way in hell that Tony Pollard thought that with a, on a broken fibula that he was worth $10 million. There's no way. You sure? I'm sure, bro, because you got to think. If you're an agent. Think, think about CJ uh, about CJ Gardner Johnson. Even though he is, you know, he's at fully healthy right now. Like, he was expected to get a bag for somebody. He didn't even get a bag from the team that he was playing on. But he think about up, Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But this is what I also believe, too, though. I also believe that the there wasn't a large like NFL like devalue of his position too. You know what I'm saying? They are purposely running the number down on running backs right now. And you know, I actually think Tony Pollard's agent actually did a good thing because you got ten million dollars guaranteed for a player that's hurt. That is true. Like I don't see I don't I, I don't like as an agent you got a uh, agent's looking at him like bro I don't know what you're talking about like my 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 client is technically winning like he got ten million dollars guaranteed and he has a broken fibula right now like I don't know how much more better of a deal they could have got better than that you know what I'm saying so it's like I, you put it like that <laughs> yeah, like when you put it like that you're like damn a win is a win yeah win is a win you know what I'm saying so it's like I think that you know to be honest with you I think. The agent was more involved. I think his agent was more concerned with that than anything. I think his agent was more concerned with let me get him on a team, let him let me get him a deal, can, especially since he's hurt. Especially, and I'm gonna be honest with you, to pull off what he pulled off to, in in order to for for Tony Pollard's agent to pull off what he pulled off, that's that's the agent doing his damn job, bro. Like we can all say that you know he could have did a better job, you know, for the Cowboys. But Tony Pollard's agent did his job. Like, he did his job. Like, he protected his players' assets, and that is what? His skill set. And he did it. That's by far doing his job. He get agent of the year for me on that one. <laughs> yeah. Shout like out to Michael, uh, Michael Gallup's agent, too. Oh, yeah. But this is uh, – see, I, I don't know. They might have been reading the uh, the Dallas Cowboys handbook on on uh, on contract. They might have seen how the hell the Dallas handle injured players and think everybody in the league do that. <laughs> so, you never know. <laughs> 
Because there's no way in hell, there's no way in hell that Michael Gallo should have got a contract. This is to be honest. Like, I know a lot of us love Michael Gallo. You know, he's a good underdog story. But, God, dog, like, you two Black years back to back. Man, I don't even understand that. And you had a healthy, healthy Amari Cooper on the, on the team. You ain't have to do nothing with his contract. Are you, I, I'll never understand that. Hey, real quick, I'm going to tell you guys right now, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., HTM Sports, Henny Demore, Landlord, West Coast Cowboy, we will be having a conversation with two bowl, two-time Super Bowl champion, Tony Casillas. He won, he was a defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. If you oh, listen, if you a real Cowboy fan, you know who Tony is. If you're not a real Cowboy fan and you don't know who Tony is, it's kind of cut and dry. You know what I'm saying? Saying if you had one of those real like in them nosebleed Dallas Cowboys fan that was for them dirty boys, Tony was one of them dirty boys. That boy played on the defensive tackle line. I mean, he was a defensive tackle. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, if you've ever wanted to talk to a two-time Super Bowl champion, tomorrow is your day because we will have him here. If I have enough time with him, I will even open up the chat line so you guys can talk to him for a little bit. But I'm gonna tell you this right now: this is a man who played for Jimmy Johnson, won two Super Bowls with Jimmy Johnson, and I feel like he's gonna have a really good, interesting point or interesting story on why he feels Jimmy Johnson is not in the Ring of Honor right now. And I also feel like he's gonna be able to talk to West Coast on how the Dallas Cowboys can stop the run at some point of their life, considering that's what he did for the Dallas Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Tony is a guy that is very up to date on everything Cowboys. If you go look at his Instagram. He has a lot of points. He has a lot of things that he voices his opinion on. And I'm going to tell you, man, it's going to be a really good show, man. This is going to be a really good show. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time and 12 p.m. Central Time. We got Tony Casillas, two-time Super Bowl champion on the line. Let's go. Also, oh. uh, this is, no, not on the subject we were talking about, but this is a report from Ari Marov off of Twitter. You know, it was discussing Adam Thielen. New Panthers wide receiver Adam Thielen says on the Pat McAfee show that he also had conversation with the Dallas Cowboys and the Denver Broncos before he chose to sign with the Carolina Panthers. Damn. So Thielen says he strongly believes the Panthers could win a Super Bowl. So the Dallas Cowboys actually did reach out to Adam Thielen about playing for them, but he chose to go to the Panthers. So Hey, Dallas Cowboys, you got to give him some love. Like, even though he said no, he they actually called him. He, they hit his line. They tried to see what it was looking like, and he just wasn't trying to come, come on they, to the Big D. They probably offered that dude $50, $50 bro. He said they offered him a veteran minimum and a, and a uh, $7 lemonade because they fancy like that. Hey, shout out to Wayne Brown for the $5 do, uh, donation to the trip, brother. I appreciate you, Kenfolk. And think about this in in Carolina, he's he's gonna be primarily their number one receiver. Like he gets, he I mean, there's other guys there that are gonna vie for that position, but as of right now, he's the best receiver on that team. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't been the number one receiver. He hasn't had to be able had an opportunity to be a number one receiver since Shafan Diggs was there. So I know he's loving that. And shout out to my boy, uh, my boy, uh, my hey, shout out to my boy Dwayne Brown with the five dollars uh on the goddamn on the cash. I appreciate you, sir. He said he must be for my time or not. Nah, he started on, on as a defensive tackle for us in the nineties. He was the starting defensive tackle in the nineties. What he said? What did he say? Trapaholic. He, he was. Said, he was tra- He said it must have been for his before his time. So I gave you talk about Casillas. I like now nah, he was he was the starting defensive tackle on the nineties team. If you are older, if you've been a Cowboy fan, if you're older than thirty. Or put it like this. If you remember watching the Dallas Cowboys win back-to-back Super Bowls, you should know who Tony is. Like he was a he was a focal point on that defensive line. You should guys know who Tony is. And if you don't know who he is, don't trip. Come see him tomorrow. Come watch him tomorrow. Uh, let's see. He says over here, we got a couple comments. Says he says, if you've watched Scott and Steel Doctors Talk, they talked with a doctor saying Pollard's injury isn't as bad as it seems. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I don't trust I love Scott Steele, but I don't trust him and his doctor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't trust him or his doctor. You know what I'm saying? This is what I trust. I trust known facts, and I trust I trust the past. I trust Des Bryant getting the same injury. I trust other papers getting this injury, man. Like unless we talking to Tony Pollard himself, man, I don't trust none of them dudes, bro. I don't trust none of them dudes, man. I, there was somebody saying the exact same thing about Michael Gallup, and I'm gonna tell you this right now: a player being healthy and fine is not a player playing to his being able to play to his max level. That's two totally different things. Like I tore my ACL and guess what? My ACL was, it was healed literally 30 days, 90 days later it was healed. 
Like it was actually healed. But could I go out and run and cut on it? Hell no, I couldn't. You know what I'm right. saying? Hell right. no. Right. So it's like that's a, that's two totally different worlds. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, I'm not – listen to me. I'm not knocking Sky, Skywalker. Hey, salute to Skywalker and his doctor. But, bro, I don't trust them dudes, bro. I don't trust them dudes, bro. I don't, I don't trust – I played enough football to know that a, what a fibula does. And we've seen it. We've actually seen it. We have players that have had fe- – we've have had this. And think about this. It's not about can Tony Pollard be Tony Pollard and be able to put his shoes on and walk down the street. It's can Tony Pollard be a running back that is the top running back on this team making $10 million a year while running the ball and pass blocking? That's the and question. Catch your, and catching passes because you were in the West Coast offense. So that's what we're asking. Can Tony Pollard be a better running back coming off of an injury and doing more? That's what I want to know. If, if somebody's doctor can explain that to me, then, yeah, knock me out. Let me know. You know like when I tore my ACL, a doctor came in and was like, yeah, West Coast, you'll be fine in like three months. But they couldn't tell me when I was going to go play basketball again and when I was going to be able to go run with my kids. They can't tell you that. Nobody can tell you that. You know what I'm saying? So a doctor, listen to me, a doctor only tells you when it's going to he- be healed. He is not going to be able to tell you when you're able to actually going to be able to perform at your top peak performance. And that's two totally different things. So his, you know what I'm saying? So the doctor might be right. He might be healed in two, two months. You know what I'm saying? But that don't mean he's going to be able to run and actually be Tony Pollard. His doctor don't know that. He don't know that. No, and listen, everybody healing process is different anyway, right? Because you saw people t- tear their ACLs and then they come back and go crazy like Adrian Peterson, which was an anomaly. And then you've seen people tear their ACLs and they miss the entire season like Odell Beckham. Facts. So, you like, know, it's, think, it's, it's think about much. this. Oh my God. Better example Odell Beckham tore his ACL two weeks after Michael Gallup. Michael yeah. Gallup played last year. Odell Beckham didn't play a down. Exactly. Think about that. Actually, it was a month. It was actually a month. Michael, because Michael Gallup tore his ACL at the, uh, it was at the Arizona Cardinal game, wasn't it? Arizona Cardinal game in January. Yeah, he tore his ACL in January. He was back in the, on the field by week three. Odell Beckham tore his ACL in February and did not play that entire year. Mm-hmm. So it's it's every single person is different. Go ahead. Damn, I can't Say God, it feels like I hate this new nurse, guys. Hey, it's gonna be all right, man. Just hey, just, just stay positive. It's gonna be all good, brother. Just get through it. And you know, we're gonna keep rocking with you, Jameson Taylor. He said, What? What Jameson say? You know, he talked about he, I said he talked about his new nurse. Ah oh, man, hey, pray for him, James. Just pray for him. Pray, hey, pray for him. The uh, pray you got a point. I'm going, listen, man. I'm going court, I'm doing some family court today. You know what I'm saying? I pray for my judge, Arab. I pray for all of them, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get this final um, approval for my daughter to get her last name changed. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, I pray for I pray for all. I pray for the DA. I pray for everybody. Bro. <laughs> hey, Mo, bro. hey, Mo Walton said Gallo should have sat out this year. He looked horrible. He did. I mean, I don't think he should have sat out, but he should have at least sat out the first five weeks, bro. Like, this is my thing. And Des Bryant said something that I love. He said good players don't play hurt, or at least don't play hurt for the Cowboys. Des said that for his out of his mouth. He said, do not play hurt for this organization. You know what I'm saying? And the reason being is because guess what? A lot, instead of you guys uh, being appreciative of Michael Gallup and being like, hey, man, Michael Gallup went out there and played for us. He went out there and, you know, he was hurt and he still went out there and, and did his thing for the Cowboys. You know what we say? Oh, he's washed up. Oh, on my mama. Hey, listen. They, and listen, the Dallas Cowboys feel the same way because they don't appreciate him playing hurt. He put out bad tape. They went and traded for another wide receiver because of it. They traded for another wide receiver. And you know they, there's still a possibility they can cut him um pretty soon Wait, because of the way that his contract is set up. Hey, say that one more time, man. Like they listen, Dallas Cowboys even appreciate it. Like listen, you they like this is this is the this is the equivalent of going to this is the equivalent of going to work sick. Right, you're sick. You're trying to you working through a cold. You come in you're trying to do your work on time, and because you because you showed up and you weren't the same person you normally are, they demote you. You were a line leader. Now you got to take orders from somebody that just got there. Like he even he, he not even he not even a number two wide receiver right now. And think about this: you had guys like West Coast that was on here, like bro, just give him a like. I think Michael Gallup is going to be better in year in year two. Come off of energy, I honestly think that he is. I honestly believe that Michael Gallup will be better in twenty twenty three. Why? Because he's going to be one hundred percent healthy. Guess what? The Cowboys said, "Nah, we cool." <laughs> 
Oh man, hey, hey, said it too. Like they use Ze Ezekiel Elliott playing hurt against him. Like that's why I say, like, bro, man, good points. Hey, y'all smack. He says, he says, worst a pro athlete can do is play hurt. Good job, uh, Paul Bishop. That's point. Mm -hmm. said the worst thing he says that's why i steal company time you quit hey swain he just playing, he just playing. <laughs> swain, i don't never do nothing that work i don't never do nothing that work <laughs> i hope that ain't you sway all right so let's go he says i still want to see us make a push for d hopkins d hopkins ain't coming to dallas and i'm gonna tell y'all this right here look at what the cowboys are trading the most we've traded was a fifth round pick and got players that you guys love they're not gonna. They're not about to trade no first round pick, second round pick for no DeAndre Hopkins. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you, DeAndre Hopkins is done. That that mindset is done. It doesn't even make sense now because you just gave up these two picks to bring in Brandon Cooks. He's still gonna make like eighteen million dollars. And what you gonna do? Make Brandon Cooks your third receiver? If you go get DeAndre Hopkins, congratulations. You have the highest and most expensive wide receiver room in NFL history, and you still ain't even paid Ceedee Lamb. You ain't paid C.D. Lamb. You ain't paid Trayvon Diggs. You you got a bunch of other other things you need to worry about right now. Also, something crazy: the Dallas Cowboys moved Isaac Alicorn uh, to defensive tackle. How do you feel about that? Um, luckily for Alex Alicorn, he can't legally be cut by the Dallas Cowboys, so the Cowboys can move him to quarterback. To be honest with you, and they still couldn't legally cut him. Um, Alex Alicorn is a part of this program, and I know what the Cowboys are doing. They had Alex Onicon as an offensive line for the last three years, and now his little contract is up. And the Cowboys have to, they got to bring in another player. So instead of, you know, bringing in a whole nother international player, what the Cowboys are going to do is they're going to say he's moving to defensive tackle, but he's just going to, he's just going to train with the offensive lineman. And that's going to prevent them from losing him and bringing in another guy. And then they get to keep Alex Onicon. He will be listed as a defensive <laughs> tackle, and he probably even will play some defensive tackle but on the low he's gonna be an offensive guard you know offensive tackle or you, you know what i'm saying this is just a, a procedural thing to keep him on the team but i mean you don't yeah he's 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 under that international program that nfl has where they literally give like alex Alicone doesn't even count against the 53 you know what i'm saying so against the practice roster i mean so you you don't have to cut him regardless this is just a way for the cowboys to just keep him on the roster yes he is a in in position on paper switching a defensive tackle or whatever it is he's saying but i promise you you still going to see videos of him doing what playing offensive lineman um i'll take him at def i'm not taking him at no defensive lineman bro he's only been playing american football for 5 years in his life 3 of those years were with the dallas cowboys and they were on offensive line no i'm not Defensive linemen are, are born. Like when someone comes out of the womb, there is literally a coach that catches him and says, mm, <laughs> you're an offensive lineman. You're a defense alignment. And that's just what it is. Defense alignment, this is not, you just don't pick up the, no. That is not a position you just pick up at 25, no. Hey, Wiz, I'm going to let you keep rocking, but I got to get back to work, man. I appreciate you for having me over here, man, on, on the west side of town. Yes, sir. Hey, I appreciate you, Henny. I'm going to rock for a little bit longer. Hey, but yeah, man, like I was saying, um, I, you know, Alex Ellicone did get swatched. He did get switched out. But like I said, I think it's just going to be a procedural thing. I think the Dallas Cowboys are still um, going to use him heavily as an offensive uh, offensive tackle. Um, but I think this is more of a just the Cowboys just trying to find a way to learn to, to stash him on the roster. You know what I'm saying? But I, you know, a defensive tackle position, that's not a position. That's not a position you just kind of wake up and just be like, oh, yeah, we're going to be defensive tackles. That's not how that works. You know what I'm saying? And you got to remember the Dallas Cowboys. But I will say this, though. If you do try it, you better try it now while Dan Quinn because you ain't going to get a better coach. He's definitely ain't going to get a better coach. Um, Fredo says they pulled me out and said DB. Okay. Um, they cut Zeke after he played injured. Yes, that was true. Gallup will be better, but he has to get 800 yards as a third option to stay on his deal. Really, if he gets 1,000 and he really gets traded anyway. Um. I don't think a third receiver is going to get 800 yards in the West Coast season, the West Coast system. I think that's going to be a hard task to ask. Um, you know, I, I mean, we barely had a we barely had a number two receiver that get 800. You know what I'm saying? Our number two receiver didn't have 800 yards last year. So for me to ask for a third receiver that's making 11 million dollars, I don't think so. I think we just need to accept the fact that that was not a good contract. It wasn't a good contract. Um, uh, let's go. Yeah, do you think Wagner is an option still? 
Um, I believe he should still be an option because LVE was on this team and I was still making videos about the Dallas Cowboys being interested in Bobby Wagner. So I don't see how that has changed. That hasn't changed anything. Like, listen to me. LVE is the reason why I am interested in Bobby Wagner. So if LVE is still on this team, I am still interested in Bobby Wagner. I don't, that, never, that will never change. But Gallup is better than people think. Mike, Mike, I disagree. Two years ago he was, but not today he's not. People are pretty accurate on what they believe Michael Gallup is. Nobody's hating on him. Um, I bet 75 Hall of Fame. I don't know who that is, Greasy. Before we sign any other free agents and draft picks, we need to lock up CD Lamb and Diggs. Um, CD Lamb, ooh. I don't know about CD Lamb because I know they're gonna fifth year option his ass, but Trevon Diggs for sure. Trevon Diggs for sure. For Trevon Diggs for sure. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna tell you this: I don't even believe Trevon Diggs is gonna play this year if he does not get a good another deal. I don't believe he's gonna play this year. Like I've been very, very adamant about that. He even liked my comment that I said. Like, let me see if I can find this comment. Let me see if I can find this. Like, I listen to me. I tweeted. I tweeted, I said, go pay, I said, I literally said, Dallas Cowboys, go pay Trevon Diggs because you have the money. And he literally liked the comment. So let me see if I can find that for y'all real quick. So Diggs wants to get paid. I don't want nobody y'all here thinking that he don't wants to get paid. He Diggs, Trevon Diggs wants to get paid. Like there's a reason why he's going through everything, he's doing everything right now. Trevon Diggs wants to get paid. Hey y'all, let me let me let me show y'all this real quick. Let me show y'all this real quick, and then I'm gonna bounce back to this what Emmett Smith said because I just saw that too. Here it goes. Here it goes. Right here. Found it. Found it. Found it. All right. So bam. So watch this. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Let me see. Um, I don't want a background. I want an overlay. All right, so this is what I tweeted. This is what I tweeted. This is what I tweeted. I said, no, go sign Trevon Diggs. You got the money. That's what I tweeted. To, that's what I tweeted. Right? This is what Diggs did. Right there. You see that? He said, yeah, man, he liked that. Liked by Trevon Diggs. This is the tweet. And this is where he liked it. Now, a lot of y'all going to say, ah, oh, that don't mean, hell yeah, it means something. It definitely means something. You know what I'm saying? It definitely means something. Why? Because social media in 2022 is a huge thing. And we're not even about to sit up here and try to front like it ain't. Social media is a huge thing in, with these young kids. Hey, I got a question over here. He says, Diggs' contract is only $2 million. Um, that year, this, he says, he says, that's crazy. Yeah. He only making $2 million this year. There's no way in hell he's going to make $2 million. There's no way. Hey, my boy says, would you take Adam keeping your picks and saving a few millions? I would have, I would have. Yeah, I would have. All right. Yeah, I would have. Um, Damian Harris, Kareem Hunt should at least get a look. TP hasn't handled that load since high school. TP was a wide receiver in high school. So technically he didn't do it then. I love he didn't sign Gilmore, just lose digs. That would kill. He says, I hope we didn't sign Gilmore just to lose digs. That would kill me. Me too. That, that would be dumb. That would be done. Replying, uh, Rondo. Okay. All right. So let me, I want to show y'all this. I want to show y'all this statement that Emmett Smith said about Ezekiel Elliott. I want to show y'all this, this. I want to show you this real quick. Now, remember, this is a man who knows more about the sport than we do. Unless I have a Hall of Fame, I have a Hall of Fame running back in, in here. There are people who like to disagree with Hall of Fame running backs. I don't get that stuff, man. But I want you guys to read what Emmett Smith had to say about the dismiss of, of Ezekiel Elliott. All right, let me put it up here. Boom. All right, let's read this. Emmett says, wow, this is amazing to me. No disrespect to Malik Davis, our starting running back is gone. 
and his backup has a broken leg. The NFL stands for not for long. Everyone else, go get your money because they have no love for you. If you if it don't make sense, and this is one of those things that makes you shake your head, thank you, Zeke, for giving everything you have, including playing, playing injured all last season. This is why the NFL stands for not for long. It stands for not for law. He's, he's supposed to be not for long. You could tell Emmett was mad because he had like two sparing letters in this. Everybody else, go get your money because they have no love for you. That's what Emmett Smith had to say on the subject. Now, I want to tell you this right now. I want you to raise your hand if you feel like you're more qualified on this subject than Emmett Smith. I want you to raise your hand, put it in the comment box, if you feel you're more qualified than Emmett Smith. There might be some guys in here that are more qualified on this subject than Emmett. And I'm going to tell you, there are crazy people in the world that are actually out there saying that Emmett Smith has CTE and he's just crazy and he don't know what he's talking about. And I'm like, bruh, what makes you qualified to disagree with Emmett Smith, bruh? Like, what, what, what makes you guys so confident in what you believe that you will literally disagree with Emmett Smith? Like, I, I, that, that mind balls me. Like, that mind blows me that there is an arrogant set of fans who literally are fixing their mouths in content to disagree with Emmitt Smith. And I'm going to tell you guys, Emmitt Smith ain't even talking football talk. You know what he's talking? Common freaking sense, bro. Hey, shout out to, I got a couple of dummies in the comment box. Joshua says he's smarter than Joseph Warren. Let me go look at their profile pictures to see if they were eligible. Nah, Josh, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. Nah, brother, I'm looking at your job career. That doesn't qualify you to disagree with Emmitt Smith. Let's see who Joseph is. Let's see what John says. Let's see what John, I'm mean, going to see what Joseph is talking about. Joseph, let's see where you worked at. Table games dealer. Okay, no. At Bally's? No, that doesn't qualify you. I'm sorry. Uh, Joshua says he's smarter than Emma Smith. Uh, dishwasher at BJ's Restaurants and Brewery. Hey, I ate there last week. Good food. What the f do you know about running backs? BJ's has good food, though. What the f do you know about running backs? What do you know to, to tell yourself to fix your mouth to disagree with Emma Smith? You know what I'm saying? I want to know. Your team has won 24 games in the last two years. And guess what? Ezekiel Elliott gave you 22 touchdowns in that span. So for all y'all folks that say that Zeke is washed up, I want you, you guys need to explain that to Emmitt Smith because he sure don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? But hey, shout out to all the people that are more qualified than Emmitt Smith. He says, well, Emmitt Smith has to say that. No, Emmitt Smith does not. Because Emmitt Smith didn't even support Zeke Elliott when he got signed. Zeke, the, Emmitt Smith told Zeke not to hold out. So watch your mouth when you be trying to say stuff. Emmitt Smith has always kept it 100. Emmitt Smith said that Zeke, he did not, he did not agree with Emmitt. Say, punk, wow, let me go get him out of here real quick. This grown-ass man out of here real quick. Let me go get him out of here. Where are you at? Where are you at? There you go. Let me get him out of here. Wow. Wow. Had a weirdo in the comment box. My bad. He kind of slipped through. Every now and then they slip through. But um, but yeah, man. He says, did we offer Zeke to take a pay cut or did we just outright cut him? To be honest with you, the the contract that the the guy that they just brought in on a on a visit, Rondell Jones, makes me believe that they didn't offer him anything. Like they didn't offer him anything. Esai Harold, man, what do you really have to say? You guys signed Noah Brown and gave us Brandon Cooks. Appreciate you. Everybody should be listen. Y'all leave East Sarah Held alone. He just he's his team is the team that gave us Brandon Cooks for almost nothing, and then they signed Noah Brown for something. Salute to them. TP can give you the same amount of touchdowns. No, he can't, and he's never even done that in his career. CT Madden. Oh, that's why on Madden he can. Yeah, on Madden he can, but not in real life. Not in real life. Um, uh, East Sarah Held. If you need a Noah Brown jersey, I got you, my boy. 60 bucks for you, my guy. Speaking of jerseys, I got a Trevon Diggs jersey. TP is not giving you no 24 touchdowns. I don't know who they talking to. 
Hey, top star giver today is going home with a Trevon Diggs jersey, so make sure you guys hit that star button. Top star giver is going home with a Trevon Diggs jersey, so make sure you guys hit that star button. Uh, truth is, Zeke is a is need a full season off to get fully healthy. Brad, that might be that might be a good point, but I'm gonna tell you, Zeke was healthy when he came into the season this year. He just got hurt during the season. I mean, this is the thing: if you want Zeke not to get health and not to get hurt, get him a better offensive line. You know what I'm saying? That sounds like loyalty over business. We trying to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, that sounds like a Super Bowl. So get rid of 22 touchdowns and replace them with a broken fibula. You sound dumb. That doesn't even sound smart. You're gonna you want to get a Super Bowl, so you replace a running back. You sign a running back with a broken fibula, but you want to run a Super Bowl. Shut your goofy ass up. Y'all just be saying anything now. Y'all just, <laughs> just are here saying anything now. Knock it off. Stop it right now. 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 That boy said. That boy said. <laughs> All right, let me see. Let me see if I can get the call in. Oh, I think I can. Correct. Hey, let me uh let me get this up real quick. Let me see if I might be able to get a people, couple people in here if I can. Let's see. Um doo -doo 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 -doo. questions and comments. Let's go. Still boys, my boy. We let Zeke go. West Coast, West, you think B John gonna be available at 26? No. At 26, no, I don't believe he's going to be available. I think you're going to have to pay for that, young man. Pay for the Bijan is it means you're going to have to come up for him to get. You it. are the only participant in the conference. Hold up, real quick. Let me uh. Hold up. Hold up. I got it. All right, y'all. He said, "Hey, I'm about to get the call in line up here. Boom, call in line about to be up. Call in line about to be up in about two seconds." All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Say, hey, yo, so call-in line is on. The call-in line is on. Let me uh, let, 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 let me put it in the uh, comment box so y'all at least know where, where you can send it to. All right, so the call-in line is, let me put it in here. Hey, if you want to call in, I got about 30 minutes. Let's get it. All right, bam. No, I don't want to do that. Boom. All right, bam. So, yo, it should be up now. It should be up. All right, it should be the pin message. It should be up. The call in line should be up. If you want to call in, you can call in for a little bit. Let's get it. Worked. Let's see if it worked, if it pinned. No, it did not pin, so let me do it on here. Let me see if it pinned. Hey, did it show on YouTube? Let me know if it showed up on YouTube. Oh, it did. It did show up on YouTube. Look at that. Look at God. All right, so, yo, the call-in line is up. Call-in line is up. If you want to call in, talk for a little bit, you're more than welcome. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, so there, the call-in line is up. Thoughts on resigning Steele? I think it's a, I think it's a, you know, the Cowboys actually re-signed him because they gave him a one-year deal worth $3 million. Just a one-year deal. Hey, 856, it's your boy West Coast. Talk to me. Hey, what's up, West Coast man? This is the boy Brad, man. What's up with you, Brad? Talk to me, my guy. Hey, man. Look, this, this, this. What I was, uh, I was trying to say, man. That I, I'm a Zeke fan, man. I just, I was thinking on the owner standpoint. You get what I'm saying? Like, I get the move in the order for us to really have a successful season with Zeke. I felt as though. Oh my bad. I got, I got. Confused, no, you're good. But, uh, you're good. You're good. I can still hear you. I can still hear you. Go ahead. But listen, man. Um, all right, all right. But listen, man. I, 
just on the owner on the owner aspect, I was just thinking, man, in order to get Zeke really fully healthy, because they're going to tell us he was healthy. I'm a Zeke fan myself. I love that bull. But on the owner aspect, I get it. We really need to sit that man and really have a productive season. The one-two punch with him and Tony was great for us. And I do not disagree with what they did last year. But trading him, no, I wouldn't have did that. But on the owner aspect, he does need to get healthy. That's all I was saying, you know what I mean? But see, the only issue with Zeke is you guys talk about that after the fact. Zeke was 100% healthy all the way up to week seven. So it's like you, I don't see why people like to bring up health when he played healthy and he was, was balling and then he got hurt. You can't hold his health against him because you don't know when guys are going to get held, hurt. Zeke first game, 10 carries for 52 yards. That's 5.2 yards per carry. Zeke wouldn't know. There was nothing wrong with Zeke. He just didn't get the ball. So it's like that's just kind of how it happens. Like you have a bad offensive line, they don't protect, then you're going to get hurt eventually. Like Dak's not even playing full seasons right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't I know I know people like to use the injury against him, but if that's the case then it's like y'all if like y'all like listen to me in the middle of the season, folks can say whatever they want to say, but when Zeke was out against that Green Bay game, we wanted Zeke back in the game. We wanted Zeke in that Green Bay game. Like, it's part of the reason why we couldn't pound the ball because he was injured. So it's like, yeah, you're right. Like, you got to protect those things that are that are that are valuable to you. That's all I'm saying. Like, Zeke is not a guy that comes into the season hurt and we're trying to like he not Tyron Smith. Zeke comes into the season healthy. Then he gets hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just life, man. Like, and then he gets hurt at the running back position. So, you know what I mean? So, but I feel what you're saying, though. Hello, absolutely, hello. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, hey, man, anything else you want to say before you get up out of here? Hey, man. Hey, I'm just with the star forever, no matter what happened. Hope we got a progressive season. I'm going to keep positive energy towards this, man, and uh, keep watching your thing, keep doing your thing, and uh, never look down because the star is up for your turn. You know what I mean? You got dang right about that, sir. All right, man. I, hey, um, if you see that line up, make sure you hit that line next time you up, my guy. All right, all right. Will do. Appreciate you. All right, I got um, uh, I got four four three. You're up next. Four four three is your boy West Talk West Coast. Talk to me. What's up, West Coast? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yeah. So um, I, I am a fan of Zeke. Um, so like a couple things that uh we don't talk about, right? Um, as many carries Zeke had this year, he didn't fumble the ball. <clears throat> That's, a, that's another stat like y'all can look up. That's one thing he didn't do is he didn't fumble the ball. That's a good point. With 12 touchdowns and 3.8 yards per carry still averages a first down after three carries. Facts, it does. It's not the best, but it still averages a first down. And think about this. The only way and you're going to – the only way you're going to – A only mixed way. match offensive line where you put, you know, your Pro Bowl left tackle at right tackle if he wasn't hurt. Jason Peters swapping from left tackle to left guard. You had all these adjustments on the offensive line. I don't, I, we just don't give them enough credit, I don't think. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't even think about the, the fumbling, but it's like 22, touch, 24, what, 22 touchdowns in, 10 year, in two years, man. It's like, where are you going to replace that production? And it's like people always want to talk about these yards per stats, but, man, you could have be averaging seven yards per, scat, seven yards per carry if it's not translating to touchdowns, Brad, and what are we doing? Like this is a game where the guy with the most points wins. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yep. and then Lexi says, y'all want to hold on to players past their prime. Listen to me. You're all, listen to me. You got to hold on to players past their time because you can't afford, the salary cap restricts you from having players in their prime. What is he talking about? Like, there is no and team, one thing. there is no team in football that has a bunch of players in their prime. No, no team, because you can't afford that. So you're right. all, every team is going to take, you're going to have to take chances on player. And the thing about this, a guy who gives you 12 touchdowns, that's not past your prime. What is you talking about? That is not past your prime. Go ahead, sir. Another thing, uh, you know, everybody doesn't talk about. So if we want to look at the last two years with Zeke, okay, last two years, 22 rushing touchdowns. Zeke also has a 72, 72, 73% catch rate. Yeah. Damn. And he's one of the best blocking running backs in the league. And again, if you want to go back to two years, that's only one fumble in two years of him running. Yeah. And two it, years, one fumble in two years. And as hard as he runs. Yeah. And think about this. For the, for the people who try to talk about contract talk and Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard's contract is worse than Zeke's. It's worse. Yep. 
Like, cause listen to me, Tony. Listen to me, T Troy M M Moore. I'm about to educate you, OG. Tony Pollard has a worse contract than Zeke because at least Zeke's contract, you could restructure it and get down. There's nothing you can do with Tony Pollard but give him $10 million. Nothing. There's nothing. Tony Pollard has the worst contract on the team right now because you can't do anything with it. If Tony Pollard doesn't play one game, you're still paying him $10 million. How does that benefit and the Dallas Cowboys? It, and it's only for one year. On. Go ahead. A lot of his games where Tony Pollard went off in the second half was from Zeke just wearing the defense in the first half. Like that doesn't make that doesn't make sense. It it it, it doesn't make it. And think about this: you're also going to ask Tony Pollard to do more than he's ever done in the NFL coming off of an injury, bro. Like this would make more sense if he wasn't injured. But you can't erase the fact that he's injured. Yep. Like, that doesn't make sense. You don't ask someone to do more. If, if you're an all-star hitter and you tear your rotator cup, I mean an all-star pitcher, and you tear your rotator cup, they're not going to come in and be like, hey, bro, why don't you hit two? Like, they're not going to do that. They're going to limit what you do. You know what I'm saying? This is yep. a good contract for Tony Pollard because he's hurt. This, this contract only benefits Tony Pollard. It only benefits Tony Pollard. That's why I said, OG, they were like, oh, Tony Pollard's agent didn't do a good job. I'm like, actually, he did. He got $10 million for a, for a freaking hurt running back in a devalued year of running backs. The agent did his job. Like, your job yep, as an agent right. is, is, to secure, is to secure your agent, your, secure your player's future. Tony Pollard got $10 million regardless if he plays a down for the Dallas Cowboys. I don't see how his agent didn't do his job. Somebody said we pay our own to an extent. How much money will Zeke have left on his contract? He has eight, he's $10 million as of now, but it's not to June 1. Hey, sir, anything else you want to say before you get up out of here? Uh, I just want to say uh, I appreciate the content, West Coast, and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Absolutely. Somebody said, which, so you'd rather have Zeke than a rookie? Absolutely. Like, explain to yourself yeah. why. All you, day long. Better oh, blocking, exactly. You don't just find blocking running backs like that. Like, that is, like, for real. <laughs> My None God. of that. He can, he has yeah he has seventy two percent catch rate, seventy two percent better than receivers. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. But I appreciate you, West Coast. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. All right, uh, I got six oh two. Your boy West Coast, talk to me. What up, West Coast? This is DP Johnson. Bro. What's up with you, sir? Man, chilling. Just wanted to chime in. I love you, everything that's coming out right now because it all is making good sense. Uh, I'm with you. TP got a horrible contract right now, bro. Yeah, and you can't do, and here's what you I'm can't a, do nothing with it. You can't do nothing with it. Can't do nothing with it. And here's what I'm going to put out there for everybody that, that want to be mad because we calling out TP's contract. TP had 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns, right? He had eight touchdowns. Oh, See? boy, just signed with the – okay, eight touchdowns? Yeah, he had eight. All right, well, old boy just signed with the Saints, had a 1,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. He's getting four of and Tony's getting 10. How he didn't get beat on that? Oh! Say that again. Because say that again. Tony's getting 10 M's, and he had less touchdowns than a dude that got, just got four. So if we didn't get beat on that one, I don't know what getting beat is. We did the same thing with Tony we did with Schultz. We hurried up through a tag on him because we wanted to keep him. Not even looking at the market. That's how we were, where we at right now. And think about this. And think about this. And you know the sad thing about this situation too is with the injury, we can almost guarantee that Tony Pollard won't have a better season than he had last year. So the chances of you re-signing him again is like it's it's very very slim. Like you literally are probably going to you're you're probably going to play him for one year and then just let him go because he's not going to be able to earn that contract again this year. Why? Because he probably won't even play the West same Coast. snaps. How about this, West Coast? Who was we comparing Tony to last offseason? We were saying last year he was our version of the boy from San Francisco. Now yeah. this offseason we expect him to be a bell cow back, and he hasn't done that since high school? Come on, man. Yeah, that don't make sense. And he's coming off of a broken fibula. That's why I keep telling everybody, like, listen to me. If Tony Parr had a broken arm, I probably wouldn't feel this close. I wouldn't feel so bad. But at a, a, a anything that has to do with your legs, and think about this. I remember when Zeke, when I remember when 
when Dak, when not Dak, when Dez Bryant had a broken fibula and he came back versus the New England Patriots and someone stepped on his foot and he was gone again. And he was gone again. Yeah. So you yeah. said, he said Yo, yeah. you weren't saying anything about Zeke's PCL. You want to know why? Because Zeke can still play with a PCL. CT Madden. A PCL ain't a fibula, bro. Google them. Google them. <laughs> and and, and let's just be honest, Coach. One is a piece of cloth. One is an actual speak. must. Oh, he went to the top of the free agent list. Facts. And think facts. Facts. Come on, man. Like, me and my brother was talking about this the other day. Uh, and, and I know you said it, but hopefully hearing it from somebody else and some different words might help us think in. Yeah. We we very much undervalued and underappreciated Zeke this last year. There's not too many dudes that's built like him who can move like him even in his stages now. Yeah. Now, I mean, that dude, he took, what, 230 carries this year? How many How many times did he have to put his head down in the A-gap for a blitzing linebacker? How many times did he have to uh, pick up a safety coming off the edge at full speed. Facts. Now, I mean, Zeke, a lot of time, all he has time to do is turn his head and take two steps, put his head down. All that kind of stuff. Bro, Who we well, got that's going to do it now? I'm going to tell you this right now. Off of a broken fibula, Tony Pollard won't even be asked to pass block at the beginning of the season. He's, they're not even going to ask him. He won't. Because you don't want to take the chance. And he shouldn't be, to be should, honest. Tony needs be. to have his same role. We have to get another running back because Tony, like we we've, we've all said, he's never carried the full load like that, and he's more he's more than just a running back. We need to be able to have somebody else in the backfield so we can move Tony around yep. after we've broke the huddle. You know I mean, let let him be that motion player. Him and him and CD should be our guys that move around anyway. Thanks. Let them mo motion around and cause defenses to adjust. You don't just have Tony just lined up so they can put a target on his back. Because man, you just said something. You just said something that was beautiful, bro. You literally said, "There, regardless of what you do, Tony's going to be playing a different position anyway, because he's not going to be used as the he's not a true running back." He's and think about this: he's not going to be used as that running back. He's not going to be. You can't use him that way, because now you need more from him. Listen to me, Troy. Call. I need Troy, and I need um, who else on here? I need Troy to call. The phone number's right there. I need you guys to Troy. I don't want to talk to you in the comment box. I want you to be like this guy right here. Call in and state your points. Because listen to me, nobody's talking about Zeke's contract. It's over here and done. Who cares? But what we're talking about now is the Cowboys are not going to be able to replace that production. So call to me and tell me how they're going to be able to do this. Hey, Carly, this is a great call, man. Anything you want to say before you get up out of here, my boy? Yeah, and, and just for clarification, nobody is saying that TP can't run the rock, that he can't even run uh, run up between the tackles. He can do that. What we are saying is TP is running on a slot receiver's frame. He's not built to sit there and bang heads all day. So that's why we need to get another running back. Nobody's trying to hate on TP. We're just talking facts about life and game. Facts, 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 all facts. Hey, man, I appreciate you for calling, my boy. As soon as you, every, every time you see that call in, man, please tap in with your boy. Hey, I got you, bro. Hey man, the call in line is up is open, man. For all y'all folks got these great conversations on Tony Pollard, Troy Moy, who else, man? And I don't want to hear that. Oh, I don't got time. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You type in great sentences with great punctuation. You got time to call in. If you, if you hey, I need y'all to call in, man. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. If not, I'm about to get up out of here, man. But let's have a conversation. It says Mo Watton, I would like, but I see them still using him for special teams. Gotta work Turpin in there some way. Turpin's not a no running back, bro. He ain't no running back. Three, four, six. It's your boy West Coast. Talk to me. Three, four, six. It's your boy West Coast. Talk to me. Yeah, this is Troy. Hey Troy, what's up with you, sir? Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. I was uh listening to the commentary about Pollard and Zeke. All I was trying to say was that, I mean, the Cowboys learned a lesson when they gave Zeke his second contract not to do that again. But at the same time, they have enough integrity to pay their own. That's why Tony got his money. But they couldn't give him a second contract because he wouldn't work out a deal for lower money. That's just the management being having integrity plus being smart. So you can cut them after one year if, I mean, if they don't get the deal worked out for a, a longer term deal. Okay, but that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense. Tony Pollard is still a running back who's done less than the running back that you just cut, and you gave him a guaranteed $10 million. I mean, 
That doesn't make any but sense. But when 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 he got the opportunity, when he got the opportunity to uh to to you know do the load of no. of the running, what game? how well did he do? He he didn't do well. What game? You tell me. Last year? Yes. Last year? Yeah. Are you kidding me? You tell me. When when Tony when Tony started when Tony started and Zeke was out, Tony didn't do well. What game? That's what you're saying. No, I'm asking you what game. That's what you're saying. I'm asking you what game. We're gonna Come start. on, West Coast. No, 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 we no, no. are we listen are Cowboys fans. Don't me. don't play fam, it like you don't fam, know, bro. Not, no, I'm asking you because I can't point out a game. No, I watched so the game just like you so did. Listen, did so Tony did, do well so, when he started? Fam, fam, fam. I'm when asking Tony you. When started the game, did Tony do well? Fam, I'm asking you what game. You you're you're asking me a question. I'm asking West you. West Coast. No, you pose that into the. That's into not the, a pose. The, uh, I'm not listen, sir. I'm not posing. Week. Listen, all I'm, I'm saying is I know he did because I watched the game. Okay, I can't so tell you what, what game, game because I didn't do the research. Okay, on so what? It, but I know he did. Okay, so what? But you can't just make a. So you're telling me. So you're telling me. So he what you're telling me? Though, excuse me. I'm sorry for for cutting you off. So what you're telling me is when he runs through the tackles. Tony can't can't break tackles. We see him break tackles all the can't time. Break, time out. And and then he'll he'll take it for thirty. He can be sir. productive and we can get a rook on the back end of this. Okay, can I ask you a question? Zeke was not can an ask... outlier. That's okay. all I'm saying. Now can I now I'm gonna say something real quick. You lit you know that he only has three plays this entire season where he broke for more than 20 yards that you're just saying off the tackle. And do you also know that the tackle is also where there's more places you gotta run, like the A gap, the B did, gap, and the C did gap. Zeke so let me hold on, hold on. I didn't, so I didn't inter- they- listen, brother. I didn't interrupt you. You gotta let me. In, you gotta let me finish, okay? So this, this is what I'm asking you. First off and foremost, we're only gonna talk facts. If you can't tell me which game you're talking about, then this is a roundabout conversation. And listen to me. I don't fight with. Listen to me. I would never box a boxer who I could clearly see was not out here working out like me. Like if you were Floyd Mayweather and he sees that you out here just not doing anything, he, bro, I'm not about to sit up here and box with you, bro. Like if you're gonna come on here and talk, you need, especially if you're gonna de- defend points and you're gonna be actually using words like soliloquy. If you know okay. what the word soliloquy is, you should be able to know that Tony Parker Ask started. No, let me well, finish I, my I, point. I didn't let me finish calling in. You asked me to call in. I know. So okay, I so just, let me let me finish I my point. To make a couple of points. Okay, so let me finish. I'm going to give you the games. I'll give you one game. I'll give you the Green Bay Pack, Green Bay Packer game. How did who else ran in that game? Because think about this, and then you also remember this. Do you not remember after the Green Bay Packer game when Tony Pollard's rookie, when Tony Pollard's running back coach came out and specifically said that Tony Pollard came to the sideline after the 14th carry and said, "Coach, I am done." Now remember. Ask me this. Let no, me no, I'm asking you, do you remember that? Do you remember that? I want to know, do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you also remember? I do don't. You, so you don't remember the Dallas Cowboys taking out Tony Pollard and putting Malik Davis in, in the Green Bay get, Packer game. That's how we found out about Malik Davis. How many How many carries did they average uh, with each other? You tell me. I don't know. Zeke and, and Tony. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. They, they, they average six? about the same amount of carries? Did they average? Did they average about the same amount of carries? Can I ask you a question? Is the A yeah. gap is the A gap the, the is the A gap the same as running in the in the in the in the six gap? Is running in the one gap the same as running okay. the six gap? Let me let a, answer me this. No, I'm gonna ask you when a question. You're, when you're calling a play, can you call a play for either A or the other gap that you just said? Yeah, Kellen Moore can. Does it have to be called for Kellen, the other gap? Kellen Moore can. Z can. Kellen Moore can. You're absolutely can, right. Can, Z- you, can you can you put Tony out in the flat and throw him the ball and still get the same productivity guess, can, guess as the guess running what? back? They did. Do? They didn't do that though. Uh, a la Elvis they didn't, Kamara, they didn't, or, or, but they didn't uh, do that though. We didn't uh, do that though. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. We didn't. We didn't do that though. We never did that. They rumored that. Tony, no, I'm saying this year. We're talking about this year. No, we're not we didn't do year. that. No, we didn't do because that because Tony gave us productivity. How bro, many How many yards did Tony have last year? Bro, you did tell he get a me. You tell me. Did Tony get a thousand? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you this, Tony. Tony Pollard. We had we had 1900. Yards. We had 1900 combined yards between the two the two running backs. Yes. So did Tony get a thousand? You tell me. You tell so, me. So could, could so you telling me so you telling me with a guy that has played for us. So we're we're just gonna just let him go, like we did Zeke, and people complain. Oh, we let Zeke go. We let Zeke go. So we let Tony go. He goes to another team. We'll be like, oh my God. I listen to me. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you where, you know what's crazy. You know what's the crazy you know what's the crazy. So so can I ask you a question? So can I ask you a question? So you don't have a problem that Tony gave them 
But at the same time, do right by him. We're going to give you top of the market money this year. So you year, have no problem. Only going to be for so you year, have no Tony. problem. So you have no problem with Tony Brawl. You have no problem with Tony Brawl having a broken fibula. Well, I, I, I won't know until <laughs> I, I see. What exactly. You so about. exactly. So my question is: so so you don't know. So you can't take that back because you just said that on national air. You can't take that. Well, no back. one can. Exactly. You can't either, though. So you then, why do you give him ten wait. million dollars? You can't. So why give him ten million? Because he's had it. So why give him ten because million dollars? You don't know. So why give him ten million dollars? Because of the productivity that we've seen him do. Bro, what productivity? Listen to me. That we bro, have to productivity. He only had one hundred and twenty yards more than Zeke, and Zeke missed two games. What productivity? What productivity? But I'm saying, but you're fighting to keep Zeke. I'm Why not, not fighting fight to keep, keep Zeke. Keep I'm not. No, 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 no. no. I am not fighting to keep Zeke. Nope. Stop it. I never said that. I am not fighting to keep Zeke. Zeke is what not. What are you arguing? I'm arguing this. I'm arguing this point right here. No running back should be making sixteen million dollars, no matter who you are. I've already said that. The point that we are making is that fans that are out here saying that Zeke has no value. No, Zeke does have value. He may not have $16 million worth of value, but he does have value. And that is the issue. That is the comp. And maybe, maybe that's what I need to be very adamant about. You feel me? I'm not saying that Zeke has $16 million worth of value. No, I am not saying that. I do not believe any running back is worth $16 million. We ain't got to go well, back over That's the reason that. why they didn't give Tony a long-term second-year deal. listen to me. Listen to me. Let me say something. No, it's not, bro. The Cowboys do dumb stuff all the time. We also franchised a, a tight end last year. So what is you talking about? You're because, talking under – Because Zach needed that productivity. We didn't have any receivers. So, Bro, what is you talking so about? We Gallup had... was coming off an injury. All we had was CD. We signed a bunch of no names and rookies. He needed that. So, they gave it to him. They bit the bullet and gave it to him. But the front office won't get credit for it. They get slammed for it like they're doing something stupid when it wasn't stupid. It was clearly needed. We can't pay Zeke. Listen 16. to me. You don't got to pay. We don't we stop. Still Listen to me. Fam, fam. We fam. tried to make it. So, how much can you pay Zeke? No, here. no, you did not. 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 Give him a long term deal. We're not going to be stupid enough. I'm going to mute him because now he's lying. The Dallas Cowboys did not offer Zeke Ellie the deal. They did not offer him a deal. There's They, they did not they, they did not offer him a deal. That is not true. I'm going to bring him back on here, but the Cowboys did not offer him a deal. The Cowboys did not offer Ezekiel Elliott a restructured, nor did they offer him a pay cut. That is not true. Hey, three, four, six. I had to mute you for a minute, man, because when you say things that are just flat out, I heard. Not I heard. Yes, I heard. Yeah, that's that wasn't true. The Cowboys never offered him a, 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 any type of deal. I, I know that for a fact. So that's not true. So we're why up did here. we keep Zeke? Say it again. Wait, hold on. You say, hey, three. Why one. did we keep Zeke for so long before we let him go? Because he had, he was giving you twelve touchdowns a year. That's why, bro. That's no, why. no, 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 no. In this offseason, why, why didn't we just cut Zeke immediately? Because Jer why? why my, this is my question. This is my question. This is my question. Why do okay. you think I know the answer to that? Why do you think you know the answer to that? Bro, nobody knows the answer to that for Jerry Jones. Like, bro, you can't just assume that okay. every single thing that the Cowboys do is connected to this and connected to that. Bro, Jerry Jones does dumb stuff all the freaking time. I'm going to tell you why they waited. I'm going to tell you why they waited to cut Zeke because, bro, they waited till all the good. Listen to me. The Dallas Cowboys are about holding on to the media. Do you not notice that the Cowboys released Zeke after they signed? Um, the was it the Gilmore dude? And then the two days later, you listen. We have controlled the airwaves. This is not. This ain't got. That had nothing to do with Zeke. That that this had to do with the Dallas Cowboys controlling the airwaves, being the number one talk thing on radio. That's it. Zeke can't score TDs out unless he's inside the five yard. Daniel, that's okay. Guess what? If Zeke can't score so touchdowns me, inside the five yard, that's good. So what you're telling because me we were is one of the worst uh, red zone offenses. Had, if they had cut Zeke early, that we wouldn't have been the number one talked about subject like we always are? Well, 
you couldn't really even cut him until free agency started. So free agency had to start first. Well, I'm saying he could still be designated June first. <laughs> yeah, but you had to you you had to do that first. There was a process and all that. Hey, man, you, you, there was a there was a whole process that you had to go through that. So there was there was an actual deadline on when you can do those things. And think about this: the Cowboys still technically cut him on June second because what? They're not they're designated for June second. So. Hey, what's your last comment, man? I got uh, two more people in here I got to talk to. But get, get good, good, good back and forth, though. Good back and forth. Good. I disagree with some. Oh, I no dis- doubt. I, I disagree I with some say, of the points. I think, I think we can get the productivity that we need. From who? Having From who? three back. From who? No, 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 no. I want, a, I want a name. I want a name. I want a name. I don't. I want a name. You're a grown-ass man. I'm a grown-ass man. No mythological uh, stuff. Uh, Give rookie? me a name. Who's the rookie? I have to know all the rookies. No, you at least you should, bro. This is your NFL season, bro. If this doesn't oh. work out, I'm gonna ask you a question. Well, coach, man, all I'm saying is keep keep Malik, the free agent that they're looking at. That's fine. I don't uh, think we need him. We keep Tony, and we go get a rookie. Congratulations. We are another regular ass team with regular ass running backs. <laughs> appreciate you for calling in, my guy. Well, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm I know. <laughs> appreciate you, my boy. Uh, that was a good call, though. It's always good to have a little back and forth. Um, three one zero. It's your boy West Coast. Talk to me. What up, West Coast? It's your boy. This your boy OG. What's up with you, sir? I'm chilling, man. Hey, look. Everybody talks all this madness about Zeke. To me, and this is just my opinion, the Cowboys made a big mistake getting rid of Zeke. Tony Pollard. He's a good running back. But that's not his position. You and I both know that. Thanks. It's not his position. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, running backs is more to it than just running the ball. Thanks. You know that just as well as I do. That's Thanks. why I don't understand about our Cowboy fans. They don't understand that. Zeke, Zeke is, a pass, is a pass blocker as well. Tony Pollard, he's too – Excuse my language. He's too light in the ass to take over to be blocking on guards and 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 and, and, and linebackers, especially when they're coming in at him at full speed. Off He's too light in, in the ass. Off of an injury. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, man. Tony Pollard's a good running back. Don't get me wrong. He ain't bad, but that's not his position. Yep. He is a wide receiver. Put him in a slot. We've been saying that. Since the beginning of the season, am I right or wrong? Right, and I'm gonna tell you some OG. I'm gonna tell you something that just really irks me so much is how the Dallas Cowboys gonna swear up and down that they're so money hungry and money pinching, bro. Don't nobody use a damn franchise tag like us. Like what, mm-hmm. is, bro? We didn't use the franchise tag five times in a row now. Name me a team no, that's that, using the not, franchise tag like the Dallas Cowboys. Name me a team, and that's not the Cowboys. That's not Cowboys. That's, that's not Jerry. Foot, that's not our football, bro. <laughs> I know it. That's not Jerry. I mean, think about it. Looking at the Cowboy history, and I've been watching the Cowboys since I was seven years old. Looking at their history, it has always been pound the ball, play action pass, then pass. It has always been that. Thank you, Kellen Rush, for screwing that up and messing with all the Cowboy fans' heads with the way he ran that offense. Yeah, it has been a proven fact that every time we run the ball, we can't be dealt with. Am I right or wrong? Right. You know what I'm saying? So if everybody would just sit back, you know what I'm saying, and pay attention not only to the games, but to what the organization is doing, because I really don't like what they're doing right now. But what the organization is doing you know what I'm saying, is screwing with our heads. And like you said, they're playing with the media, and the media is putting all this shit out of here, and then they turn around, and Jerry does this. Now you're thinking, oh, my God, I didn't know Jerry was doing that, or they're going to continue to hate on him like they hate on Dak, like they hate, like they always hated on Zeke, yeah. like they hate on C.D. Lamb after they got rid of uh, Amari Cooper, which to me was another big mistake. Yeah, and I'm going to tell y'all something real quick. If you don't believe there's a difference, Zeke is 200, is listed at 229 pounds. Tony Pollard mm-hmm. is listed at 209. That is a difference of 20 freaking pounds, bro. And you're going to tell me they do the same thing. And that makes a lot of difference on that football field. Like, and you listen to me. I'll be butt hurt over Zeke being injured. I don't mind. 
I don't mind. Like, I don't mind. I don't mind, make, I don't mind y'all making fun of me because I'm talking about Ezekiel Elliott. Like, I just, because I'm the same guy that got to run the damn ball hats, and I was right about that. See, I'm going to tell you in life, a lot of times you be right in life, but you just got to wait. I'm going to be right about this, just like I was right about James Washington, like I was right about Amari Cooper, like I was right about Amari Cooper. I mean, uh, uh, James Washington, a couple of I got to, uh, like I was right about Tony Pollard in the beginning. You feel me? I'm going to be right you about. You was right about Dan Bryant. Right about you Dan was Bryant. right about Dan Bryant. I was right about Donovan Wilson. Like you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna be right, but guess what? It's just gonna take about a year. Is it all I hope is for all y'all folks that's crucifying me now? Don't you ain't gotta inbox me and tell me I'm happy. To, hey, West Coast, my bad. I apologize. You were right. You ain't gotta do that. All I just need to do is I need you to come back here and just jump on that ball. He says you was wrong about Pollard. No, I ain't. Tony Pollard's not a running back. He's not a running back. He's no, not, he's not. He's not an NFL. No, running back. he's not. And he proved that. And he proved that all season long. Yep. <laughs> Tony Pollard is not he an NFL running that. back. Can he be? Listen to me. Tony Pollard does the same thing Ceedee Lamb does in the backfield when he gets an open lane. He runs really fast. That's it. Mm -hmm. Go look at what Ceedee Lamb is averaging yeah. as a running back. Ceedee Lamb's averaging like eight yards, bro. Anybody can run through open lanes, bro. Anybody can do that. But I'm telling you, he's not a he's not a starting running back in the NFL. I don't care what you're No, he's not. You know what I'm saying? No, he's not. Kansas is he City coming off a regular of a team with a regular fibula? running back? There's no way in the world he'll be up to par like he was before he broke that fibula. I played football in high school and in college. Yes. You played football in high school and in college. You probably played for the AF, I mean, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, that's right up under the NFL, semi-pro. You probably did that. And during the times that you played, just like that time I played in high school and college, you see injuries like that. And when you see injuries like that, you never see the production after the injury. Production slows down. And people don't understand that. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you this right here. Kansas City's running back has been a running back all his life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Tony Pollard is a guy who's been a running back for years. Hey, OG, I got to go pick my kids up yeah. from school, man, so I got to get up out of here. But hey, man, this has been a man. It's good talking to you, bro. This great. It's been a great, great conversation. This has been a great conversation. This has been a great conversation. Listen to me, man. Listen, I just want you guys to all remember where you are because a lot of times when these Cowboys do this dumb stuff, you guys just like to glaze over it and come back and watch my content. But I don't need y'all to do that this year. When it's proven that West Coast was right about this, I need you to change the way you think. Buy a run the damn ball hat and change the way you think. Because I'm gonna tell you this right now. Um, that this one. Tony Pollard right here. This right here. This gonna blow up in our face, bro. Like, and I don't, I don't listen yeah. to me. I am the type of person where, listen, my brand is solidified for me to tell the truth. There's some guys out there that's going to water that shit around the brew. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm the same guy that's going to tell you that Tony Potter, that, that, that it was going to take time for CD lamb to be a number one receiver. It is. If you think Tony Potter mm -hmm. can be a number one running out back out the gate, it's going to, it's not going to happen. You need time. So no. Tony Pollard was not a starting running back in college. No. I think we need a time veteran running back. back. I think we need to get a veteran running you, back, not no rookie, a bet. Listen to me. I think we need to get a bet. I'm asking, Lord Juno says, so Tony Pollard just started playing running back in college? No. Tony Pollard started playing running back in the NFL. Tony Pollard was, listen to me, Tony Pollard caught more passes than rushes in college. Tony Pollard has, look at that. He has more more receiving catches and more receiving yards than he actually has rushing yards. What would that make him? A <laughs> wide receiver. Like what? Is, what? Tony Pollard changed to a running back at the NFL scouting combine. That's a fact. That's a fact. You guys want to know I, why I, Tony Pollard? Hey, West Coast. <laughs> I, I really got. I go. actually believe. I actually believe that we need a veteran running back. Ain't no good ones. Pick out up there. a vet. The best one is Zeke. The best one is Zeke. But since Zeke. we got rid of him like idiots, we need to get a vet. That's my opinion. We need a vet. All right, my guy. Hey, I appreciate you for calling. I'm about to get up out of here, man, so I can uh, so I can um, go get my go get them chilling. Hey, listen, a running back can a running back that can catch typically is a running back that can't block. So I don't care about that. You know what I'm saying? I need my our actual running back. We don't need a running back that can catch right now. We need an actual running back. Appreciate you for calling in, OG. That's what I said. All right, man. All right, y'all. So I'm out of here, my boy. I'm out of here. This is West Coast. D TP declared at the senior. Yeah. TP turned himself into a running back at the senior bowl. That's a fact. Like, that's a documented fact. He turned himself into a running back at the senior bowl.
All right, uh, I'm out of here, man. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. He says that's the system these days. Most running backs have to catch the ball nowadays. It's not the 90s. Lord Juno, that's not true because um, Derrick Henry don't catch nothing. He don't catch nothing. Derrick Henry don't catch nothing, and nobody has a problem with it. All right, so, yeah, we out of here. You guys already know what it is. Never look down because stars up. Peace.